There's areas of the Somerset levels that are restored that are very secret and very hidden and you have to know where you're going and there's some, some fantastic places to visit. In Somerset it's a little bit different. We work on the old drained field structure so it'll be one or two or three or more fields where we've stripped the topsoil and used that as roadways and we've created what we call heads of peat where we've dug back peat out the ground and spread it and then we use that area to rotivate and scrape off the dry peat. 60 years ago it was all cut by hand. Um, people were literally out with hand cutting equipment. They cut it, turned it, stacked it, let it dry and then at the end of the summer they would load it onto horse and cart or into tractors and trailers and bring it in. For many years Pete was dug for burning turf and then with the Second World War and the Dig for Britain campaign and particularly the John Innes formula, Pete became much more widespread in horticulture. I think it's very important to realise that what we're doing in Somerset is really is industry leading in the UK and also in Europe. Peat is a, is a controversial topic, the use of peat is controversial, you know there are peat alternatives, peat use will not go on forever but it's very much our view as a Somerset industry that whilst peat is used it should come from the most responsible places. Now we didn't start as bog, we started, started as agricultural land so we use the underlying clay to, to bund the sites to make them hydrologically isolated and then we create areas of island and reed bed within them and re-wet them. So we're aiming to create a wetland environment very similar to the wetland environment that was here before this land was first drained by the Romans. I think restoration to a matrix of habitats and land uses is very important. This was a working landscape, it's always been a working landscape, it's sustained a population. And I think it's very important that we see restoration to conservation, but we see restoration with some commercial elements as well, because as a working landscape, it, it's important that it sustains local communities. And I think some thought really needs to go into that. Um, as land is restored, that it's not economically dead. It's, it must be environmentally beneficial and economically beneficial to communities. Um, so the RSPB first started to develop a, a reserve at Hamwell in 1994. And this landscape at that time looked very different. So the ponds you see in front of you are actually the previous excavations of where peat was dug out. Um, the peat was dug out to about a depth of two metres where it gets down to the clay underneath. So all these old peat diggings we've taken and we've sort of reshaped them and made islands in a certain shape. Um, and initially um, we propagated reed seedlings and reeds are the tall plants, the grass-like plants you can see behind you. What, it, what attracts birds to the levels is uh, the sort of vast area of open landscape that you have here. Um, very varied, um, there's certainly lots of um, pasture land. Some of that's um, wet in places which attracts a large number of uh, wading birds and also uh, lots of wildfowl in the winter. We have some wet grassland reserves. Primarily those reserves are looking at um, conserving specific species of birds that are dependent on that kind of habitat. As well, of course, nowadays, with the increase in nature reserves in the area, is the uh, incentive to come and experience the, um, you know, the great sights and sounds that we have here too.